So um, welcome to yet another episode of China is not our enemy. Thank you so much for your amazing engagement. Um, we're having successes and, you know, one of the, the best news we have is we've been able to push the let's go to war with China folks out of getting um, high level appointments. And um, but we can we hear in the Biden administration that there's we haven't, you know, totally cleared the way, but um, Senator Kerry's in there really using his voice to say, we're not going to get to um, take care of the climate if we can't be cooperative with China. So we're, we're happy there's at least one voice in there. Um, and we're thrilled that you joined us today. I'm very excited for this conversation. You know, as we continue to dismantle the anti-China rhetoric, um, led by those in power in the US. Um, we're constantly excited to find more partners in peace. We know that to make have an effect and to get to peace and to unravel this cold war that's being drive, driven towards China, we have to have a big tent. So on this episode of China is Not Our Enemy, uh, I'll be joined with Rob Kajiwara, who's the founder of Peace for Okinawa Coalition. <clears throat> and Okinawa has long um, relationships with the US and China. And um, so I think he's he's from there and will be able to tell us more about what that looks like. You know, as we've seen from the US war in Iraq, always these wars involve more than the country. The war in Iraq has proved to destabilize the entire Middle East and this growing Cold War on China is also gonna affect the entire region. So um, introducing you to Robert Kajawara. He is a native Lu Chao and president of Peace for Okinawa Coalition. He's a regular speaker at the United Nations and other places advocating for indigenous rights and self-determination and has appeared in numerous media publications, uh, BBC World, People's Daily, China, South China Morning Post. Um, Robert's um, petition to stop illegal construction of the new military base in Hinako, Okinawa has over 212,000 signatures on it. So he's also an amazing organizer. Um, his PhD dissertation at Manchester Metropolitan University is on historical Lu Chao and China relations. So we're very excited to have you in conversation with us today, Robert. And I wanna start by asking you, you know, tell us more about you um, and not only who you are in your relationship to your country, but um, also, uh, why you started a peace uh, collective. Hi, Jody. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yes, I'm Robert Kajiwara. I am native Luchuan, also known as Okinawan. Uh, I'm, I am mixed race. I'm also uh, native Hawaiian. And I do split time between uh, both Okinawa and Hawaii. Uh, I am founder and president of the Peace for Okinawa Coalition. We are a Luchuan group uh, founded and led by millennial Luchuans. We have offices in both Okinawa and Hawaii. Uh, for those who are not aware, Hawaii does have a large Luchuan or Okinawan population, at least 50,000. Uh, we have also been working very closely for years now with native Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders and, and various nations and people groups from around the world who are in a similar position as Lu Chu in terms of uh, advocating for demilitarization and peace and uh, trying to restore our de facto independence. Um, so yes, I am, uh, I am native Lu Chuan and we started this group in order to, uh, well, uh, advocate for our independence and demilitarization, but also to uh, spread and promote Luchuan culture, history, language, and, and issues, um, especially to a worldwide audience, because you don't see that a lot from actual Luchuans. A, a, a lot of times, 
um, when people write articles or books or, or whatnot about Okinawa, it's written or produced by Americans or Japanese, not by Okinawans. So we really want to get Okinawan voices heard uh, to a, an international audience. Wow, that's fascinating. I mean, painful, um, but that here you are a people and you're not, your story is not being told by yourself. Um, yeah, I don't think enough of us realize that, that, um, and your work for self-determination. So as you look out at this growing war, Cold War on China, um, maybe take us into what is the relationship of Okinawans with China over probably what centuries, I would think. Yeah, so Lu Chu is geographically located very close to China. We share an ocean border. Um, a lot of Americans have this misconception that Lu Chu or Okinawa is, is geographically very close to Japan. That's not really true. Um, Okinawa is actually very close to China and the Philippines. Uh, the largest city, Naha, is actually closer to Manila, Pyongyang, Seoul, and many major Chinese cities such as Shanghai uh, than it is to Tokyo. So historically, Lu Chu has always had a very close and friendly relationship with China, with Korea and Southeast Asia as well, but especially with China. Um, and this dates back uh, thousands of years to informal relations, um, even before written records. Uh, however, in 1372, Lu Chu and China did start a formal uh, uh, relationship, bilateral relationship. Um, this was this is commonly known in English as a tributary relationship, and but this term is very problematic because when uh, Westerners hear that term tributary relationship, they immediately think that China oppressed Lu Chu. That that China forced Lu Chuans to, to pay tribute and, and that China invaded and bullied Lu Chu. Even the Encyclopedia Britannica, if you look up uh, their, their writings about Okinawa or Lu Chu, it says that China invaded and subjugated Lu Chu around the 14th century, which is not true at all. The historical sources are very clear on this. There is no evidence whatsoever of China ever having invaded or harmed Lu Chu in any way. So this relationship was actually uh, consensual and mutually beneficial. It was a relationship between equals, although China was considered slightly more equal than Lu Chu simply because of its enormous size and, and wealth. Lu Chu is, is quite small and China is, is one of the largest nations on the planet. Uh, but um, China always treated Lu Chu very well. So the way it would work is Lu Chu would pay tribute to China. And in return, China would give many gifts to Lu Chu. Uh, and China always gave more to Lu Chu than what they received in order to demonstrate uh, their vast wealth and, and, and power and um, generosity. Um, so this was, uh, this was China's obligation as the, uh, the greater power. And so Lu Chuans were extremely happy with this arrangement. So they sought to pay tribute to China as often as possible. Uh, this was um, financially, this was a losing uh, arrangement for China because China had to give more than what they received. Uh, but the benefit for China lay in prestige. So um, the prestige they received by having Lu Chuans uh, pay tribute to them helped to stabilize China's internal affairs as well as foreign affairs. So it, it was a mutually beneficial arrangement. And um, there was there's no historical evidence of China forcing or oppressing Lu Chuans in, in any way. So um, that's fascinating, like how the, the history is written, who did it benefit um, to write the history as, you know, incorrectly? And what are the relationships with like Japan or the United States or other 
um, other powers? Yeah, so uh, prior to the uh, 17th century, Luchu had a positive and friendly relationship with Japan as well. However, in 1609, the Satsuma clan of Japan, which was Japan's largest and most warlike clan, uh, decided to invade Luchu. Uh, Luchuans fought valiantly, but they ultimately lost. Um, and uh, so Satsuma forced uh, Luchu to pay tribute to them. Uh, and um, so this was the start of Japanese oppression towards Luchuans. However, Luchu continued to maintain its independence uh, until 1879. At that time, after the Meiji Restoration, Japan began to industrialize and militarize in a Western sense, and they wanted to collect colonies similar to the Western powers. Uh, so they again invaded and forcefully annexed Luchu against the will of Luchuans. Of course, Japan did similar things to much of the rest of Asia and the Pacific. Uh, during the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, Japan purposely uh, built an inordinate amount of military presence on Okinawa Island, which is the central and, and largest and most populated island in Luchu. They did this with the expressed content, uh, ex sorry, expressed intent to sacrifice Okinawans in order to save Japan, the Japanese. And so during the three month battle of Okinawa, um, roughly one fourth to one third of the Okinawan population was killed. Um, it is said that every Okinawan lost family members. I lost many family members. Um, uh, it really devastated the, uh, almost the entire island. Um, and to this day, it's a very difficult uh, issue for Okinawans to think about and talk about. Uh, during that time well can yeah. we just, can we just stop there for a second sure. because um you've described like the laying of a trap that um obviously the trap laid then the u.s gets into it and really causes all this to happen by not understanding it's a trap laid and doesn't think about the people who live on the island um as an independent people, at, at, at least that's what I'm hearing you say. Um, yes, however, during the 19th century, Luchu and the US actually signed a treaty. So the US was well aware of the history. They were, they, the US recognized Luchu as a sovereign and independent country with that treaty. In fact, as a gift, Luchu gave, um, a uh, 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 stone, limestone, to the U.S., um, which was included in the Washington Monument. This was a symbol of their friendship between Luchu and, and the U.S. This treaty was signed in 1854. So the idea that the U.S. was just not aware of Luchu uh, as an independent country, that's, it's, it's false. They, they were well aware. In 1945, uh, obviously, uh, the U.S. defeated Japan. They occupied Okinawa and all of the Luchu Islands. At that time, around that time, uh, all of Japan's other colonies began to decolonize and began to restore their independence, except for Luchu, because the U.S. military decided to keep Luchu for itself to use for bases. So, um, I'll... Uh, for, for decades, Luchuans were under direct U.S. military rule with no form of democracy or, or self-governments at all. And of course, Luchuans strongly uh, protested this, especially because uh, of all the problems that the U.S. military causes in Luchu. So in 1972, the U.S. gave Luchu to Japan uh, without a vote from Luchuans uh, which is illegal under international law, and it's a major human rights violation. And so since 1972, Luchu has been under joint U.S. and Japanese occupation.
you're, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry. Um, I that makes me very sad. Um, so, uh, what was the relationship that continued with China through all this? So, there's the relationship with China. Then Japan takes in. Is there any other relationship that continued with China in the time when it was occupied by Japan and then the U.S. and now joint occupation? Yes. Um, however, you know, obviously, Luchu being under Japanese and U.S. occupation uh, with no form of self-government, the the formal bilateral relations between Luchu and China obviously, uh, you know, have stopped for now anyway. Uh, but informal relations, yes, of course, have continued. Uh, China has always recognized the history of Luchu being an, an independent country until J Japan forcefully annexed it. Uh, China, the People's Republic of China, um, including the, the uh, Communist Party of China, has always recognized Luchuans' right to self-determination. They, they've always said that Luchuans deserve the right to self-determination, which Japan and the United States have never done. So actually, China has, has actually uh, um, treated Luchu much better, even in the 20th and 21st centuries. So what is, what is your concern right now about Okinawa and the growing Cold War on China? Yeah, so obviously this is a huge concern for us. We have no desire whatsoever to get mixed up in uh, this uh, Cold War or whatever you want to call it. Um, we've never agreed to be part of Japan or the United States. We've never agreed to host US or Japanese military forces. And um, Luchu, the majority of Luchuans want the US and Japanese military forces out. Okay, we, we have nothing to do with, with Japan or America's uh, aggress, aggressions or, or foreign affairs with, with any country. And especially not with China because of the history of peace and friendship between Luchu and China. So what, what, um, what steps can be taken to, you know, A, raise this in a higher decibel, you know, that, um, I mean, you've got a lot of people signed on to your petition. So you're obviously a really good organizer and there's a lot of passion. Um, how, how can we help? Because um, having Okinawa have self-determination and moving the military out of their benefits a people, but it also is one less, uh, you know, place where the side wars can happen, which are the worst, um, as, as you've described, where a quarter of a country can be killed and it's just not even on the, in the history books. Yeah, so... Um, well, Code Pink has already been a strong supporter of us. Um, I, we're very thankful for Code Pink's uh, support. Um, for example, in January 2019, we had a press conference and a rally in front of the White House in Washington, D.C. Uh, Code Pink uh, was a big supporter uh, for us in that. Uh, so we look forward to continue working with Code Pink in our, in our uh, mutual endeavors. Um, so we are working at the United Nations and with uh, the international community at large to help restore Luchu's de facto independence. Um, of course, uh, it's, it's not easy. It's, it is uh, complicated. Uh, so we appreciate uh, Code Pink and, and other Americans who, who have shown uh, support for us uh, on our website, peaceforokinawa.org. Uh, there are various ways uh, people can can get involved. Um, so I, I encourage people to check that out. And so, um, you know, in in the relationship between Okinawans and China, do you feel like there's still most Okinawans feel that there's a harmonious relationship with China and they would be concerned about uh, this Cold War? Absolutely, absolutely. And this was actually proven the United States government itself <laughs> is aware of this. Uh, we, we know this via WikiLeaks. The US government um, had some internal documents in which they, they admit that the majority of Okinawans uh, do not see China as a threat and have a positive or at least a neutral view of China. Um, even 
even, um, for example, Naha City maintains a very close sister city relationship with Fuzhou City in, in China, which historically Fuzhou was the uh, most important uh, city in China in terms of uh, China Chinese Luchu relations. So that relationship continues even to this day. Fuzhou has um, helped build or, or sponsor various uh, projects in, in Luchu. They've built a, a beautiful uh, Chinese garden in downtown Naha. They've built um, other, uh, the, the famous uh, dragon stone pillars uh, in, in, in Naha. And so um, the majority of Luchuans simply do not see China as a threat, they have a positive or neutral view of China and certainly have no desire to start any type of conflict uh, towards China. Thank you. And so I also, if you could just bring us a little into Okinawa, like what have been the costs of to the island and the people, you've described how many have lost their lives, but health costs or like to be that inundated with so much militarism, what, what, how has the island experienced that? Uh, we have been hurt so, so greatly by U.S. and Japanese militarism in, in Luchu. Uh, we, it cannot be overstated the damage they've done in terms of economic uh, suppression, in terms of environmental uh, health, uh, crime. Uh, it, there are just so many problems that come with this ongoing military presence. Um, uh, for instance, uh, the military takes up 15% of, of Okinawa's land and around 30% of Okinawa's arable land, yet it contributes just 5% to the Okinawan economy, creating a huge deficit. Um, so this is economic suppression. Again, it's a major human rights violation. Uh, Japan and the U.S. are suppressing the Okinawan economy to try to prevent us from, from regaining our, you know, um, our, our self-determination and our independence. Um, so, well, thank you so much for sharing all this depressing information. <laughs> That's weird. But, um, you know, it's, I have to say, um, everything you've said is heartbreaking and I'm so sorry. And, um, you know, for us, it's to, you know, to look at this example of the, A, the cost of war, the cost of militarism, and um, the cost of having, and the beauty of having a relationship that honors all. So I appreciate you telling us that story and bringing us aware. Um, if we wanna follow you, how, what's your Twitter handle? I, we, we were able to put in the chat um, your, uh, your, oh, here we go, um, at Rob, K-A-J-I-W-A-R-A. -A. So we should all follow you and, and raise up your stories and engage with you. And um, we look forward to continuing our engagement, continuing to raise up the costs of war that have been born in Okinawa as, as the canary in this coal mine and the, um, so many lessons to learn from you. Thank you for all your work. Oh, no, thank you. And thank you for having me. All right, peace out. <laughs>